Let's have a sesh on Edexcel International GCSE formula. For this specification, there are two types of formulas. There's the ones that you need to know, and there's the ones that you're going to be given on the formula sheet, but you need to practice them. You need to practice them and be able to apply them. Let's go through, firstly, the ones that you need to know, the ones that you need to learn. Well, firstly, it's profit. Profit equals revenue minus costs. But you might need to calculate the revenue. Remember, revenue is just price times quantity. The costs part of the profit equals revenue minus cost formula. Costs is the same thing as total costs, which is number three. And if you need to calculate that, remember, total costs is fixed costs plus variable costs. Fixed costs are those costs that do not vary with output. Variable costs are clearly those costs that do vary with output. Number four is total variable costs. So if you need to calculate your variable costs, which is the same thing as your total variable costs, well, remember that it's variable cost per unit per one thing times by your output. Your average unit cost, your average cost per one thing, per one unit. Well, that's just like any average. It's your total cost divided by your output. Number six, your market share expressed as a percentage. That's going to be business sales divided by total market sales times by 100. Your market growth expressed as a percentage is going to be change in sales divided by original sales. And clearly, because it's expressed as a percentage times by 100. Number eight, you've got to learn this one, break-even output. So break-even output is where total revenue and total costs intersect. They, where they intersect, where they cross, and you will read that down in terms of units on your output axis. But you could calculate break-even output with a formula, and that formula is fixed costs divided by price minus the variable cost per unit. And that will give you the break-even output in units. The same thing as total revenue equals total costs. Sticking with break even, so margin of safety, number nine, margin of safety is your actual sales minus your break even output, your break even output, what you calculated in number eight. Doing cash flows, so net cash flow is your cash inflows minus your cash outflows. Remember, if the number is in brackets, that means negative. So if it was brackets three, that would mean negative three or minus three. If it's positive, it will just be expressed as you'd normally expect to see it, free, if it were free. 11 is closing balance. So closing balance is your opening balance plus your net cash flow. Your net cash flow you calculated in number 10. And number 12, percentage changes. Well, percentage changes you think new, so new number minus old number divided by old number times by 100. Now, they're the formulas that you've got to learn. These ones you're going to be given, but it's good to still learn them because you can be quick with them. But at minimum, you need to be able to apply them. Let's go through them. So number one is your gross profit. Your gross profit is your revenue minus your cost of sales. You might also need to calculate your gross profit margin. So number two, your gross profit margin is your gross profit divided by your revenue times by 100. Your operating profit is your gross profit, which you've calculated in number one, minus other operating expenses. And if you need to calculate your operating profit margin, that's going to be your operating profit divided by your revenue times by 100. Number five is markup. The calculation for markup is profit per item divided by the cost per item per one thing times by 100 because it's expressed as a percentage. Number six, your return on capital employed. Well, that's going to be your operating profit. And you've calculated that in number three divided by the capital employed times by 100. Your current ratio, your current ratio is your current assets divided by your current liabilities, express that as a ratio. And number eight is your acid test ratio, which is your current assets minus your inventory, could be a stock, all divided by your current liabilities. I hope that helps and I'll be seeing you at the next sesh.